This series is going to focus on algorithm runtimes. We're going to look at all the big algorithms. We're going to see how quickly they run, why they have that runtime, if there's any way we can possibly improve them, and which tasks should we use those for, because certain algorithms are better at certain tasks than others. Now, anyways, what exactly is an algorithm? I want to try to start this. I don't want to start this too much from the beginning because I'm assuming you have a little bit of knowledge about algorithms if you're watching this. But what exactly is an algorithm? We'll start with that and then we'll get into, you know, a bit more detailed stuff. An algorithm is going to be a series of steps. It's a series of steps that will not be misinterpreted. It is very easy to follow the steps and arrive at the solution. It doesn't necessarily need to be something related to computers. These steps to make a turkey sandwich will be considered an algorithm. They're going to be pretty simple, you know, cut the bread, put mayonnaise, uh, put the turkey, put whatever else you want. Really simple steps. Nobody will misinterpret them. And really the steps of an algorithm need to be so simple that a computer could understand them and perform them. Now that might seem a little bit strange because we think computers are all knowing and all powerful, but really they're not. They just follow what we tell them to do, right? We give them orders and they do them. So if we're going to give them an algorithm, we need to be sure that the computer will go from step to step and there's going to be no problems. Now, obviously we will run into problems once in a while, but once the algorithm is perfected, it needs to perform in the exact same way every single time. So we really focus on the runtimes of algorithms because we want to obviously make sure the algorithm is correct, but then we want to make sure that the amount of time that it runs in is reasonable, right? We don't want to just sit there for days or years even, um, you know, w waiting for the algorithm to finish, right? Certain algorithms will work quicker than others. And all this will depend on the input, what you're putting into it. The order of the input, so if your data is already, let's say it's already in numerical order, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's already sorted, then we don't need to worry about sorting it. So that might work a little bit quicker than something else, and we're all going to see these things as we go along. But one thing that's always going to matter is the input size. Now, I'm going to show you exactly why we want to pick the most efficient algorithms possible. So let's go ahead and draw a little table here. I'm going to go ahead and make some space. Now, there's three things I want to focus on. Three types of algorithms. First one is going to be what we call linear time. And that is going to be N. The next one is going to be polynomial time. And that is going to be N squared. And the last one is going to be exponential time. And that will be, let's say, 2n. Now, the n here is going to be the input size, right? What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say we'll put some input sizes up here. So we'll have our input size n, and that is going to be equal to, let's say, I'll put 10, we will put 100, and we will put 1,000. So the runtime is going to depend on these over here, right? So let's say the runtime for an algorithm that has linear time and an input size of 10 is going to simply be 10. That's going to be the runtime. If it has an input size of 100, it will have 100 and 1,000, 1,000. So we see that as we increase the size of the input, we're going to have the same value as our runtime. And that's really good. Something that runs in n time, linear time, is going to be really good. Now we can increase a little bit, and that's where we start. You know, you're going to notice how things are going to start to get really slow as we have bigger input sizes. So what happens if we have n squared polynomial time? Well, sometimes we will allow n squared. We're always going to try to find something that's a bit better, but some of these algorithms we'll look at will have to have n squared time. So right now we'll have, let's say, 100. This one here will be 10,000. And the last one here will be a million. So we can see as these start getting bigger in input sizes, the runtime of the polynomial time starts to run away from the linear time and it starts to become a bit of a problem. But sometimes we can live with this. Sometimes we can live with the n squared. Sometimes we really don't have a choice. We just need a task to get done and we have no alternatives. We will see some things that we can do to make sure we can try to avoid these if possible. And we'll see that down the line. Now, the one we're going to want to avoid at all costs are going to, is going to be exponential time. This one is way, way 
way too inefficient. And I'll just show you this right now, right? I can just show you right away. If we go ahead and plug in the values that correspond here, I'm actually going to use red font because it's just it's just terrible. We see this one over here. Okay, this one, I, I guess it's kind of manageable, but we can see it's already 10 times the size of the polynomial time and, you know, over 100 times the size of the linear time. So that's, you know, we can see how this is really not good, right? Now it gets even worse. If we go over here, we're going to have 10 to the 30. I don't think you understand how big of a number that is. That is a huge number. So already this is just like, there's no reason to ever use exponential time. It's just, it's just ridiculous, but it gets worse over here, 10 to the 300. This is, this is just ridiculous. I, really seriously, try, try to write out this number right now. And I guarantee you'll get bored and do something else by the time you get writing out the zeros. That is just the one that we're going to want to avoid, right? This one here, at all costs, we will want to avoid exponential time, right? This is definitely the no-no. We're always going to want to try to divide, to you know, create algorithms which are going to be as efficient as possible. Sometimes polynomial time, we cannot avoid. We want to try to get better than that. There are other options, right? We don't have just n and squared and 2n, right? We have n log n. We have just log n itself, logarithmic time. But for the sake of just this example over here, I want to show you these three to see why we got to make sure we pick the right one and we got to make sure we build our algorithms to be as efficient as possible because just getting the answer right is not good enough. We need better than that. So I want to look at one more thing uh, in this video, one more thing before I uh, move on to some, you know, getting more detailed about the actual algorithms itself. And I want to talk about, we're going to look at the exact same problems here and we're going to look at them in, so let's go ahead and build that table again. So we had, let's go ahead and write them. We had n, we had n squared, and we had 2 to the n. So this was linear time, this was poly, and this one was exponential. Now let's talk about computing power. We want to see what is the biggest size problem we could solve in a certain amount of time. Now this is just going to be relative, right? I just want to show you how to compare the actual values themselves on you know, just between one another. So I'm not you know, going to be talking about specific times here. Uh, we will go ahead and we will write two computers. So we have computer number one. Computer number one is, is old. It's a little bit slower. And then we're going to have a fancy computer number two. And computer number two will have twice the computing power. So computer number two has twice the computing power of computer number one. So let's say computer number one can with, you know, in Paul, in a linear time over here, sorry, it can solve a problem that is size T in a given time. That's the size we can solve size T, whatever that is in 25 seconds, we can solve a problem that is of size T. Now we're looking just relative over here. We're going to just be comparing the values. Now, if computer number two has twice the computing power, how big of a problem can it solve when computer one can solve it in two? In sorry, in size t. Well, I just gave it away. It's going to be two times that value. So that would be two t. Simple enough. Now we're thinking about the same value of t over here. What size problem could you solve if your algorithm was in polynomial time? Well, for computer number one over here, that is going to be the square root of t. That is the size of the problem. We're not talking about time over here, right? This is the size of the problem you can solve in a certain time. So that will be the square root of t. Now, what would we be able to solve over here? Well, we know computer number two has twice the computing power. It's going to be able to you know, make a bigger problem or solve a bigger problem in that time, it's not going to be two times the square root of t it is going to be the square root of two multiplied by the square root of t. It's still going to be a bigger value, but it's not going to have the same two times increase as we saw before. So we're losing a bit of that increase, right? The significance of the computing power just is going away a little bit, right? It's slowly dipping away. Now, what about the, you know, the one we want to avoid, the exponential time? What happens over there? Well, the size of the problem gets even smaller, and it's now going to be the log of t. 
And for here, this one over here with the twice the computing power is now going to be the log of 2t. Now we could use log properties over there to analyze that and take a look at that, right? How could we go ahead and break that up over here? Well, what is the log of 2t? What log properties do we know? Well, we can, you know, take a look at that and try to, to analyze that. Well, let's go ahead and get a new color here. Log 2t is the log of 2 plus the log of t. Simple enough. Now, what do we know exactly about this? Well, the log of 2, we know that the log of 2 is 1. So this is essentially 1 plus the log of t. Now, what does that mean, right? Now, this means that if you have twice the computing power on a problem that is running in exponential time, you can only solve one unit quicker than the other one. That's half. That means every time you double your computing power, you're getting just one bigger problem, one, one size bigger problem. It's, you're, not, you're not even getting, you know, it's not even like you're getting a multiplication better, right? At least up here, we had the square root of 2 better. Here we have a coefficient 2. It was even better. Then we had the square root of 2. Now we're just getting plus 1. The point of this is to show you how, even no matter how quick your computer is, right? If you're trying to solve a problem in that exponential time, it's just not going to work. You know, the, the best computer you can possibly have, you know, it doesn't matter how much computing power, it's still going to have problems. It's still going to be slow. So that's all I want to get to today. I don't want to get into too much detail. I just wanted to show you the significance of the problems and why we wanted to make things, you know, just, you know, make them as efficient as possible. And you can see why over here, right? Why should we bother doubling our computing power with, if we're trying to solve a problem over here, that is just going to be an absolute disaster. So we'll go ahead and cross that one out. We're going to want to avoid that one at all costs. And we'll see some things as we progress through the series. So this was my introduction. It ran on a little bit long. I promise I'll keep the other videos uh, down a little bit. So thank you very much for watching.